Well, welcome back. Today what I'm going to do is go over my version of balancing equations. And to do this, I'm going to use a worksheet and kind of go through those tips that I gave you in the note handout. Now, an important thing with this, again, those helpful hints is are you know, usually want to leave hydrogen and oxygen for last because they're the most common elements. They show up more than once on each time, usually. You want to use a pencil. I have my Cubs pencil here. In case you make a mistake, it's really easy to erase it then because if you have to go back and rebalance something, a lot of times it's really hard to go and keep crossing it out with pen by the time you get done you can't even read what elements you have there now this worksheet will be attached to this video so that way I know it's kind of small and hard to see but we'll make the best that we can of it all right so I was able to zoom in a little bit on the worksheet and again you can download this worksheet I'll attach it to the video now we're gonna leave number one for a little later on because I'm gonna show you a nifty trick and it only works in certain situations now, another one of the things that I gave you a hint on doing was balance polyatomic ions as a single unit because that way you can knock two elements out in one shot. Now, it has to be the same polyatomic ion on both sides. So here we have sulfate. On this side, we have the exact same sulfate over on this side. So we can balance the sulfates as a single unit. Now, if you want to make a little table underneath to keep track of what you balanced, you go right ahead. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and, and balance these out then. As, first of all, I'm going to balance the polyatomic ion sulfate. So I have sulfate on the left, sulfate on the right. They're good. Now here I have OH, which is hydroxide, but on this side it's water. So I can't balance the hydroxide as a single unit. I have to balance the oxygens and I have to balance the hydrogens. Well, you want to balance things that only appear once on each side of the equation first. So hydrogen appears one, two, three times. Oxygen, on the other hand, we already took care of this sulfate, shows up once on the left and once on the right. So we want to balance, since we've already done the sulfates, the barium, one barium, one barium. Then we want to balance the oxygens, because hopefully the hydrogens will take care of themselves. On this side, we have two oxygen. So on this side, we have to put a coefficient of two in front. So now we have two oxygen on the right. Now we have four hydrogen on the left, two hydrogen plus two hydrogen, four hydrogen on the left. So we're good to go with that one. Uh, let's go through another one here. How about, uh, we'll go ahead and do number three, aluminum sulfide. It's a good way to practice naming. Just in your head, figure out the name of the formula. Aluminum sulfide plus hydrochloric acid yields hydrogen sulfide or dihydrogen monosulfide, but everybody calls it hydrogen sulfide and aluminum chloride. Now it's not aluminum trichloride because aluminum is a metal. So looking at it, pretty much everything shows up once on each side of the equation. So let's balance the aluminum first. So we have two aluminum here, so we gotta put it two aluminum over here. Now if I would have balanced the chlorine first, that's not a big deal, I would have a three here. And then I would just have to go back when I have to multiply this by 2 to balance the aluminums. I would have to change the coefficient in front of the HCl. So the aluminums are done. Sulfur. 3 sulfur. 3 sulfur. Now you have to multiply the subscript by the coefficient. So 2 times 3 is 6 chlorine on the right. So we need 6 chlorine on the left. 6 hydrogen. 2 times 3, 6 hydrogen. And we're good. Now I'm going to show you this neat trick and it only works if you have a single element. So here we have C2H6. This would actually be called ethane. It's an organic molecule. According to your naming scheme though, you would call it dicarbon hexahydride. Plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide in water. So ethane is a primary component of natural gas. So when you burn natural gas with oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water as the products. When you have an incomplete combustion, that's when you get carbon monoxide. So on this side, we have two carbon. On this side, we need two carbon. Now oxygen shows up once on the left, twice on the right. Hydrogen shows up once on the left, once on the right. So we want to balance the hydrogens first. So we have six hydrogen. So putting a three in front of the water gives us six hydrogen on the right. Now 
2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. We need 7 oxygen on the left because we have 7 oxygen on the right. No matter what we put in front of here, though, we're going to get an even number because we have to multiply it by 2. So you take how many you need divided by how many you have. Well, I need 7, and I have 2. 7 over 2. Well, 7 over 2 times 2 is equal to 7. Because you have a, set, a 2 on the bottom, a 2 on the top, numerator, denominator, they cancel each other out, and you're left with 7. Now, a lot of times you don't want to leave your balanced equation as a fraction, because then you'll get a complex fraction if you have to use that in a, another calculation. So we're just going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that denominator. Well, what you do to one term, you have to do to everything. So I have to put a 2 in front of the ethane. That's why I used a pencil, so that way I can erase it. This simply becomes 7. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. And these are the simplest whole number ratios because 2 and 7 are both prime numbers. Now, every year in class, everybody, each class seems like that they want to balance number 19 together in class. So we're going to balance number 19 together. So here I have nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, potassium, oxygen, hydrogen. Here we have sulfate. Here we have ammonium. Here we have hydroxide. So the only polyatomic ion that we can actually balance as a single unit are the sulfates, the SO4. One sulfate, one sulfate, we're good with sulfates. Everything else we're going to have to balance the, by the elements. So let's go ahead and balance the potassium. One potassium, two potassium. So I have to put two potassium on the left. Now let's go ahead and take care of the nitrogens. Now you have a subscript outside the parentheses, so it's you have to multiply it by two. So there's two nitrogen. Over here we have one. So I've got to put a 2 in front, so now I have 2 nitrogen on the left, 2 nitrogen on the right. Now hydrogen shows up 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Oxygen, because we've already taken care of the oxygen here, shows up once on the left, once on the right. So I'm going to balance the oxygens. It just makes sense because that way I don't have to go back and rebalance it. So if I put a 2 in front of the water, hopefully hydrogen took care of themselves. So 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 gives me 10. Well, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. It's balanced, so we'll give ourselves a star. And if you want to balance the other equations on here, I will post the answers for it as well.